Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Ah, it's been three days, but it feels like it's been three weeks. I have missed you all. I wonder if Raid's around. Are you gonna join us tonight, Raid? I mean, that would just, just make everything perfect, wouldn't it? Let me double check and make sure he's not muted before he gets very, very angry at me. <laughs> Shane, no joke, where are they? Here they are. I just bought a new pack <laughs> of thumb socks. These ones are white. They're a little longer than the other ones. I, I think they're a little better quality maybe too. I don't know. Anwar is is definitely the uh, he's the he's the brilliant mastermind behind this whole concept. If it wasn't for his suggestion, I, I never would have known. Never would have even thought about it. All right. Perfect. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't exactly looking to, you know, match um, with the jacket, but but then when I was on there and I saw white ones, I was like, hey, all right. So, how was everybody? Before we get too ahead of ourselves, I do want to take a moment and do what I could not do yesterday. And that is welcome in person our newest members who uh, as of yesterday were officially inducted into the Tricom. Hail Satan, Jason, and Milen. Milen? Milen. Forgive me if I don't pronounce your names correctly but I do try. Despite what Raid says. I'm pretty excited for, for today's show for a number of reasons. So many reasons, so many reasons. And um, I mean, and you guys are, are the reasons. I, um, I just want to thank you guys from the very bottom of my little space heart because yesterday was a difficult day and I was not expecting the reaction and responses that I got from you. So thank you all so much for your kindness. It really went a long way and um, I'm very grateful. So we need to move along before I get emotional. But it's good emotions and I really appreciate you guys. Truly. And so today, what are we doing? What are we doing? We're not holding a Steam controller. We're holding one of these dang PlayStation controllers. I don't have a PlayStation. I've never had a PlayStation. The closest I've ever had to a PlayStation has probably been, you remember Bleem? from way back in the day. I remember thinking, wow, this is legit because I can buy this in a store. So it must be quality. But oh man, what a nightmare. 
What a nightmare that program was. Oh my God, you know what I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, this is not, this is not part of the agenda. But you guys, I just now discovered, holy crap, this is insane. <laughs> okay, look, this controller, no joke, is connected to my gaming PC. We're connected to Chell via USB type C. And FYI, I'm not using a special cable. I'm using the cable that came with my mouse. And I'm going through an Amazon Basics USB 3 hub. So if any of you had concerns about needing, you know, a specific, and maybe you do need a specific cable, I don't know. All I know is the first Type-C cable that I found in my little box of cords has worked perfectly. You know, and sometimes things don't always go, What you know, and this is nice. This is neither here nor there. The point is, we're connected to Chell. And earlier, we were connected to Wheatley. Wheatley is the music computer. And when I connect to Wheatley, I use it wireless. Um, same thing with the Steam controllers, because I don't game on Wheatley, and, and it's nice to be able to move around from the bridge all the way deep down in engineering and be able to control the computer. So wireless is, is real nice in that regard. And I'm so surprised right now because it is connected to both computers simultaneously and it is working at the same time. It's working at this, I'm moving the mouse and both mice, both, both cursors are moving at the exact same time. Maybe this is normal, maybe this is not unusual, but this feels very unusual to me. In fact, this could be an amazing, this could be amazing. Because in terms of Steam controller stuff, right, there's a utility called VSC View. And a lot of the, you know, the dedicated Steam controller content creators like Ramble and uh, Critical, they, they use, they use this uh, program so that you can get an overlay of the Steam controller as they're using it. And it's very handy. And a lot of people really love being able to see what a person is doing, you know, without having to rely on a camera necessarily or something like that. Um, it doesn't, it's not a great solution if you have multiple PCs though, because I don't want the overlay over what I'm seeing. I want the overlay on Dog, which is the streaming PC, and I want I just want it over there. I don't want to see it, but you know, it gets complicated because you're plugged into a different computer. Um, I've thought about looking up solutions like uh, you know USB over Ethernet to see if I can use a device, in this case a Steam controller, simultaneously on two different computers. Uh, this might actually be a solution for that, at least in terms of this controller and its function because it's working on both computers. And that is just absolutely fascinating to me and very unexpected. I'm gonna have to dig into this more and see what the limitations might be here, but th this is very interesting and, and I'm surprised. But we need to turn this off because I'm gonna end up inadvertently clicking things that I don't mean to click. So let me shut Steam down over there. Okay. All right, I think we're gonna be all right. Hopefully, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna build. Oh my God, this is just a nightmare. I'm, I'm trying to use the, you know, the def default desktop, Steam's default desktop config for the controller right now, and it is, it is so bad. I am so terrible when it comes to analog sticks. <laughs> If you could see what I'm trying to do right now, you would undoubtedly laugh very, very hard. Uh, so I'm not gonna show you. Oh my God, I cannot hit the freaking, con okay. All right, you know what, actually, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you, because this is kind of an example. All right, now I'm trying to close the tab, okay? And I'm using the joystick. I'm not screwing with you right now. I am trying, there, oh. Oh, oh, damn it. Come on, come on. 
Come on. Come on. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Now, <laughs> this may be, this may be the experience of a lot of people trying to use this controller on their desktop, not knowing that things can be so much better. Oh yes, Shane, use the gyro. You're absolutely right. And we are going to use the gyro in so many different ways. And that's what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna build a config from scratch. And I don't necessarily, come on, here we go. Um, I don't necessarily know exactly what the best workflow for this is going to be because I don't have a lot of experience using this controller on a desktop. And part of building a good config is trial and error. It's experimentation, seeing what works, and not just seeing what works conceptually. Because you can think of a concept and you can think, oh, what if I put a, 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 a short press here and then a long press there? And then you think, wow, that makes so much sense. But then in practice, just like with games, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you want something to be adjacent to another function because you end up using both of those functions back to back, but you don't necessarily realize that. You don't think of it that way until you actually get in there and start using it. That's probably what's gonna happen. But what I'm gonna do is I'm not going to necessarily show you what I think is the be all end all, best config ever possible, ever made, whatever, because we haven't made it yet but we're going to. And uh, it might take time. It might take some experimentation. But I do have a lot of experience with these things. These things being using a controller on a desktop, specifically, you know, in the last few years, using Steam's uh, controller configurator. So let's jump in here. Oops. And and get started. But first, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to restart Steam. It will take but a moment. I, um, I have one more thing that I want to mention that I wanna bring up. Today is also a very special day uh, because today, happens to be the birthday of a very, very dear friend of mine back home in the Triforce. And since we got shut down, since our, our off-planet broadcasts have been terminated, thanks to the Galactic Federation, I have no way of really knowing if he is going to be able to get this message. But I believe that somehow he will. And if that's the case, then my friend, happy birthday. No matter the distance between us, I think of you often, and I truly cherish all of the memories that we've had in the past. And I do believe that we will again, somehow, someday, make many more memories together. Happy birthday. I'm gonna imagine that he just got himself a PS5 somehow, I don't know. And he was thinking, man, I wish I knew how to control my desktop. I wish I knew how to control my desktop in a really overkill sort of fashion. I wish I knew how to do all sorts of things on the desktop with a controller, with this controller, this new DualSense PS5 controller. Well, my friend, Today's your day, your birthday. My gift to you is this video. 
where I will walk you through building a config for your desktop for your DualSense controller. What I hope that you learn from this is not where to go download my config, but what I hope you learn is what is possible. And I hope you learn different ways of thinking outside the box when it comes to the Steam Controller Configurator. And when I say that, I don't mean the Steam Controller Configurator, I mean Steam's Controller Configurator. Of course. All right, without further ado, let's just jump in. This is it, ladies and gentlemen and space folk. Here we are. This is the terrible, terrible config that it comes with. And I don't understand why, why this would be a default. Again, we can say, well, hey, the controller is new. But even the default Steam controller desktop config is not a great experience, in my opinion. So we're going to do a few things. We are going to change everything, and we're going to remove everything right away. Just the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to go remove all of this. This is all terrible, terrible, terrible. No. What? Why? This is awful. All of it. OK, here, here, here. And this is what I suggest you do before you start changing things, because when you start getting in there and tweaking things, you're gonna you're gonna forget what you changed. You're gonna forget what was added by you and what was a default. You don't want to deal with that, so just get rid of it all. I have a blank template that I, I use for my Steam controller, but I don't have a blank template for this controller. So we're basically creating one right now. All right. Okay, so first things first. What are we gonna do here? We're going to make a whole bunch of action layers. And, um, and just, just to sort of go over what, what you can do with this, um, you can't do anything that you can't do with a Steam controller or, or a lot of other controllers, uh, you know, outside of maybe, um, you know, like there's a speaker. So that's cool. I don't know what you'd use it for on a desktop, though it does register as a sound device. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure that that something will come to mind at some point. Um, you know, outside of obviously, like game developers can use it in interesting ways. But what I'm talking about here is more like what can we use these things for? I don't know yet. Um, we also have a touchpad. It's a terrible. It's a terrible position. Horrible, horrible position for a touchpad, but I'm grateful that they have it because you might as well put something useful in that space. So I'm not knocking it, not at all. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap to a unified touchpad. So the whole thing is one thing. And maybe we change that later, maybe we don't, I don't know. But that's what we're gonna do right now. Now we're gonna make a bunch of action layers because the way that this is gonna work is we're gonna need a lot of functions and we're gonna need a lot of ways of accessing various functions. And unlike the Steam controller, we don't have touch pads, like usable good touch pads for our thumbs that we can map to all sorts of things. I don't have that. We don't have grip buttons. Grip buttons are a game changer. We don't know, oh, we don't have those. So, um, we have to get creative with how we're mode switching, with how we're using corded presses, with how we're accessing action layers and action sets. And the way that I think we should do this is using the D-pad. Now hear me out, I know the first inclination is to put arrow keys on the D-pad because they're, it's a D-pad and they have arrows. But stay with me because I think that the D-pad could be more useful as an action layer switch mod a fire button array system thing. I'll explain more. Oh, yes. And I'm wearing the damn thumb socks because I don't, my fingers 
are not happy with these with these uh, joysticks. It's it's not a big deal. It might be because they're new, but it's a little rough. It's a little rough for my soft little space fingers, and um and I just don't like it. And since I'm so used to wearing these anyway with, for the Steam controller, um, I kind of like it. You know, it, it kind of makes everything feel a little nicer. And I'm not saying that I would rush out and buy these for this controller. That's ridiculous. But if you have them, throw them on and see how it feels. It, it feels nice. They're soft and cushy and, and um, yeah, I don't know. I'd give it a try. I, I like it so far. And, all right. I know. This is not going to be like a review of this controller or anything like that. This is purely just going to be about building a desktop configuration. Nobody really cares what a guy who doesn't know anything about gamepads thinks about a gamepad for a system that he doesn't even own. So I don't really feel like I have any relevant insight to offer there. If anyone is curious about the perspective of a hardcore mouse and keyboard user turned Steam controller user five years ago, uh, you know, let me know, and I'd be happy to share that perspective. But I don't think that's a very relevant perspective to the vast majority of people. And I want this video to be valuable to more people than just, you know, the Steam controller people. So carrying on, here's what we're gonna do. Um, yes, Shane, yeah, you're absolutely right. You can use the uh, that little mic button for things. And, um, and in fact, you know, something that, that that would be kind of nice for just I'm thinking off the bat is um, is as a is a, a keyboard button, you know, make a make a little keyboard pop up, and we'll we'll get into the keyboard later. But all right, here's what we're gonna do first. Before we add anything, any, any uh, functions, we're gonna add a bunch of action layers. All right, we're gonna add one called L. Oops, L. And then we're gonna add one called R. And we're gonna add one called U. Now you can name these whatever you want. I'm just doing this because it's faster. U and D, so left, right, up, down. And we're gonna go mod. We're gonna add one called mod. We're gonna add one called app switcher. Oh, whoops. No, I didn't mean to do that. I don't wanna add that there. Not to an action set. We're only making action layers right now. App switcher. Okay. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start on our base layer. We're gonna turn our gyro on. And that's gonna make all the difference in the world. We're gonna change it from always on, and we're gonna put this down on right pad, right stick, click, to turn gyro off. We're gonna put acceleration on high, because that is just the thing to do, especially when you're controlling a desktop. In all cases, I find peak Steam Controller gyro performance is gained when you use acceleration. And I know like a lot of mouse people are like, what, acceleration, ah, stop it, but <laughs> it's, it's true, it's, it's really good. It's really, in fact, it's kind of important even. Uh, I mean, depending on what you play and, and, and how you play and how well you wanna play, how, how sweaty you wanna get. Um, haptics, we're gonna leave haptics on low. Currently, there's no haptics on here. It has some like rumble stuff, uh, rumble support. I think I haven't experimented with any of that in games, but there's no haptics currently. We're just gonna leave the haptics on the default. I know people like having the haptics on. So um, currently we don't have them, but I'm gonna leave it on the default. That way, when an update comes out that enables haptics, then we will be able to um, have them. Um, I'm going to bump up sensitivity vertical scale just a little bit, a little bit right there. Okay, and now here's an important thing. And this will make more sense as we as we go along. We're gonna go to trigger, press, mouse, dampening. We're gonna go to both trigger, soft, pull. And we're gonna increase that all the way. And what that's gonna do is make it when we soft pull the trigger, it will freeze the gyro. 
And this is going to be very important. Um, otherwise, your gyro is going to make it very difficult for you to, to make precise clicks, make it almost impossible for you to make accurate double clicks. And uh, this is going to solve that. And if you're thinking, well, how do you drag things? Well, you drag by going through the soft pull to a full pull, which will maintain the click, but then turn on the gyro. So this is what we want to do for now. We'll see how it goes. Now we're going to go up here to our trigger. We're going to go soft pull, soft pull. Very important, soft pull. And we're going to change it. Simple threshold as the trigger style. This is going to be our main, our main button. We're going to use this button all the time. We're going to go two ticks up from the left on our soft pull point. This is our left mouse. Left mouse button is right here. This is exactly what you'd expect for your left mouse. Soft pull is going to be right mouse on the left trigger. And we're going to put this on simple threshold as well. Two ticks from the left. Now, so whenever we right click with a little soft pull, it will freeze the mouse and it will perform that click. And, uh, and if we need to right click and drag, we'll be able to left trigger and drag, you know, through the soft pull to a full pull. Now, the next thing that we need to do, let me think, let me think. Okay. Modifier buttons are really important. And a lot of what I'm gonna do is gonna be based on how I use a computer. And maybe you use a computer differently, maybe you use different software, um, maybe you spend time using your desktop um, differently. I want, you to, I want you to see what I'm doing and see how it could apply to your workflow. Don't just take what I'm doing and apply it to your thing because it might not be the best thing for you, but take the concepts and get creative with them and really experiment with these things because you'll find certain configurations, certain combos almost, that will uh, make your experience very, very different. And, and I'm going to find those things as well as I use this desktop config. And I'll probably make follow-up videos in the future where I update you guys on uh, what changes that I've you know, found are important and what changes that I found are just uh, uh, sort of personal improvements. So we're gonna go down to the button pad. This is gonna seem very strange probably. I know, I know. Uh, the D-pad would be arrows, right? And then the button pad would be your main like enter and escape, but no, we're, we're not gonna do that. But it's gonna make sense and it's gonna be extremely usable when we're done. All right, so button pad. X, this is gonna be, this is gonna take a lot of getting used to me talking about X, because X is A, but all right, so X is going to be the Windows key. Square, is square? Yeah, square is gonna be control, triangle is gonna be shift, and circle is gonna be alt. Now when you look, you know, it, it sort of makes sense, right? Control is the button to the left, alt is the button to the right, Windows is in the middle, shift is up, so that's, that's kind of like the thinking behind there. And here's the neat part. Actually, yeah, you know what? We're gonna leave this like this, and we're gonna go, we're gonna put these in our mod layer. Yeah, th that's gonna be the better, the better solution. And I'll show you why. Because we're gonna do something really neat here with our mod layer. Now that we've assigned those, we'll be able to copy them over. Copy activator. There, now we have it in here. And do it here as well. Copy activator. All right. Now we have all these modifier buttons in our mod layer. And we're gonna do a lot of neat stuff with our mod layer. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is, based on how this is laid out, this is very similar to my Steam Controller config where I use the touchpad. I put a D-pad underneath the touchpad, and then that D-pad accesses these same functions. So what this is gonna do, we'll be able to hit Control and Shift. We'll be able to hit Alt and Shift, and we'll be able to hit Control Win, Alt Win. I don't know, I, I don't think that that's a thing. I, at least I've never used Control Windows or Alt Windows key ever. 
but I do want to be able to access Control and Alt at the same time. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go here, and we are going to add a corded press, and the corded press is going to be Alt. And you access that by hitting Square, which in this case is X, because this menu has not been updated to reflect the DualSense button names. So it does get complicated, but we can do this. Anytime you see things like A, B, you can know that X is actually square. Now what this is gonna do is make it, whenever we hit Control Windows, it's actually gonna do Control Alt. And then, so much more. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna make this our arrows inside of our mod layer. We're gonna, we're gonna put arrow keys all over the place and they're gonna make contextual sense. And that's the point with this, is the point with this is to not think like a keyboard, not think like how you use a mouse and keyboard. Think about how you use your computer. How do you use software and what can you do outside of thinking about shortcuts and button placement for your keyboard. Because a lot of keyboard shortcuts are related to your hand placement, your finger placement. And when that's no longer relevant, we can kind of think a little bit differently and we can achieve some very interesting things. All right, we need to go in here now. We're gonna remove these. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to go hold action layer and we're gonna set these to mod. Uh, hold action layer, mod. And this means that while we're holding these, it will be accessing the mod layer. And the reason that I want that is because I want I want arrow keys at hand when I'm holding control. That's important. Same thing with shift, same thing with alt. You want arrow keys available. You want a scroll wheel available when you're using those modifier keys, because that's something that you're gonna do a lot. You're gonna hit control and you're gonna scroll or, or shift and scroll to scroll horizontally. So that's important. And then we're gonna change this left Inside the mod layer, we're gonna change this left joystick to a scroll wheel. Forward binding is scroll up, back binding is scroll down, circular direction. We're gonna increase the sensitivity a bit. We may adjust these sensitivities as we go. Spin friction, uh, I'm gonna turn that off in this case. All right, now that's, this is how we're accessing the mod layer. And you've seen what the uh, what the functions are, and what happens when we go into that layer. Now, what what we're gonna do next? I will show you. I will show you. Next, we're gonna mess with our app switcher because the app switcher is awesome. App switcher is is one of my favorite layers. <laughs> you guys have favorite layers? I have favorite layer. App switcher. Well, actually, the R layer might be my favorite layer, and I'll show you why in a bit. So to get to App Switcher, let's think about this for a second. How do you Alt-Tab? Alt-Tab is a very conveniently placed function on the keyboard. It's a function that many of us use five million times a day, and we don't even think about it. We just do it. Our brain thinks, oh, let's get over into that app, and we have already switched over before our brain even completed that thought. So in that case, it needs to be somewhere convenient. Not just logical, but convenient. If we put it someplace logical, then this would be a good place. This button right here. I don't know what button this is called. It's called the three lines button. The three lines button is really great because those lines could sort of represent different apps, right? So that kind of makes sense. Let's go ahead and put it there, and we'll see how that goes. But it's not gonna be the only place we put it. But we're gonna start there. 
And the reason that's not going to be the only place we put it is because what we will find is that it is not convenient moving our thumb from the joystick up to that button five million times in an hour. That's not a fun, a, a fun a road to travel. It, it will get very old. It'll be nice because you'll always know that that is where that function is and because it, it makes sense, right? It's a logical place, but it's just not convenient. But we're gonna put it there because it makes sense for now. But the convenient place to put it is over here on this left joystick. Uh, oh, I know. I know, this is crazy, but watch. Let me show you why. Because this left joystick is gonna be very important. This is our scroll wheel. Circular binding, oops, scroll wheel. No spin friction, turn up the sensitivity a bit. Now watch this. Scroll wheel click action. And now you're thinking, oh, put the middle mouse there. No, the reason middle mouse is on a scroll wheel on a mouse is because it makes sense for your hand. Not because it has anything to do with a scroll wheel. The middle mouse button very rarely has anything to do with scrolling. I mean, when I hit my middle mouse button and it turns on that little that little four-way scrolling, it's like, oh, I never mean to do that, you know? So it's always other functions that I use the middle mouse for. So I don't really need the middle mouse button to be related to the scroll wheel in any way. In my case, because my thumb is gonna spend a lot of its time on that left joystick, it becomes a very good place for the app switcher. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna access our app switch layer by clicking this left joystick. And I think that that's gonna be a really nice place to put that because it's gonna be very convenient, even though it may seem a little less logical. But again, we have our logical solution over here, our fallback, I guess. But what you'll find is you're gonna use the joystick one way more than you're gonna use this one, I think. All right, now, we go into our app switcher layer. This, this over here is the, uh, this is called the always on action. This one right here. We're gonna, we're gonna set this. We're gonna go Alt, Tab, right? Okay, so whenever we're in this layer, Alt tab is being held down. That means we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to hit Alt tab. We don't have to hit Alt and then have a button for tab and then go Alt tab because that's silly. Let's not do that. We don't need to do that. That's what we would do on a keyboard. But we're not using a keyboard, we're using a controller. So we could be smarter than that. And that's what we're gonna do. Put Alt tab there and now watch this. Now remember, we're accessing this in two different ways. So we wanna be mindful of what we do next. Hey, Shane, you have to get some sleep for working. I'm so sorry. Well, hey, I, I, when I finish this, I will be sure to upload this config to the uh, Steam Controller channel in the Tricom, and, uh, and you can check it out. And again, take some ideas, experiment, change things around, and share with us what your findings are because we'll really be able to create just the ultimate desktop config if a lot of people try things and come to different solutions. So I, I really look forward to seeing what you think and uh, what your experience is in using this controller with a desktop. Uh, and that goes for anybody. I, I, I'm, I'm all ears. I wanna know what you think and how you're doing it and what you're doing and where you're placing things. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're accessing the app switcher by clicking the left touchpad or the left <laughs> touchpad the left joystick and this app button. Two different ways. So here's a couple of different things that we're gonna do. We're gonna make this left joystick a scroll wheel, but the binding is gonna be right and left. Uh, hey, do you see where we're going with this? This is exciting. Okay, put the sensitivity up. And then the click, we're gonna leave the click where it is because we still want it to function as the whole action layer app switcher button. Even though when we're using this as a scroll wheel, we're not necessarily using that function because this is a, this is a very dynamic sort of thing. And th there's gonna be a lot of settings and a lot of things that I'm gonna set up and that I'm gonna, gonna add. And it might think, well, this is so complicated. You know, he's doing 
he's making this so complicated. He's adding so many different things. How am I ever going to remember? But the idea is, and, and what I'm doing when I'm thinking about where I'm placing things, is I'm thinking, how am I using this? How, what's the experience going to be like? And you'll be really surprised how quickly a logical and comfortable um, config just sort of adapts to your hands, and your hands adapt to it. And before you know it, you've memorized everything because you're really not memorizing placements of everything. You're memorizing the feel of it. And that's, it's hard to describe. And that's something that I learned with the, uh, the Steam Controller desktop config. And I got a lot of, a lot of good response from people over the years with, with, with that config. And I think the reason is, despite it being a very seemingly complex config, is that it just makes sense in the hand. So as we go through this, understand that certain functions, while they might look very detailed and very complex in the configurator, the complexity that we're baking into it here is so that things are logical and comfortable and sort of predictable when we're using it in practice. And, uh, and so over here, this is also going to be a scroll wheel, I think. I think this is a good idea. And I'm, I'm doing this for a reason doing scroll wheels instead of arrows because, again, something uh, that I learned with the Steam Controller is when you're using it on, on a desktop, going, you know, especially with a joystick. Joysticks can be a real pain because it's force. You're dealing with force and the release of force. Force and the release of force over and over and over. With a Steam Controller, you're not dealing with that. With the Steam Controller, you're just tapping. You're just touching left, right, left, right. Right? Very simple. Makes a lot of sense. Very, it, 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 there's, it's low impact. And I'm not saying it's, you're going to break your thumb or you're going to get calluses using this controller. But what I'm saying is you, you can't just touch, right? The, the, the joysticks on the, on the uh, PlayStation controller, they're not capacitive. Uh, at least I don't think they are. They're certainly not capacitive uh, in their function here. Um, so it kind of changes things and it limits what you can do but when you use a joystick and you're constantly I don't know I I use these general terms and it, it's not I don't really mean to like generalize I mean I'm, I'm speaking from my experience when, when I'm pushing pushing a joystick I get tired I get I get really tired of going left 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 and and yeah you can hold it right and we're gonna do a lot of long presses to get turbo, you know, hold the repeats and all that stuff. But I just don't like going left, 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 right, 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 up, 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 Ugh, it drives me crazy. I would much rather just circle that joystick. For my thumbs, that's a much more fluid and uh, it's a much more zen experience, for lack of a better term. Uh, all right, so that's what we're gonna do. We're putting these on scroll wheels and this is our right and left arrow. This is how we're navigating through our alt tab menu. Now, we're still gonna be using mouse clicks. We're still gonna be using the gyro to make our selections. Um, if we want to use the mouse to click on the program that is in front of us, uh, that's what we're gonna do. And um, I, think that's all, I think that's all we need to do here for now. Now th now's a good time for everyone to grab their space fluids and replenish your own. Ah, wonderful. All right, let's carry on. We've got our app switcher set up. We may make modifications and adjustments. Actually, we are gonna do that real quick. We're gonna put arrow keys over here on the D-pad. Oops, because we, we are in an action layer that is very specific to a single use, which is switching applications. And because of that, we're gonna be able to, to uh, put arrow keys on the D-pad. So, hey, there you go. Now we're going to move over. Got our app switcher set up. And I know maybe you're thinking, hey, Riker, why don't you, why don't you jump into to the desktop and start using some of this stuff? Well, I don't wanna do that yet because here's the problem that I have. I jump in and I test one thing, and then I go down a rabbit hole for that one thing, and I get sidetracked. And right now, I want to be in a problem-solving mode. I want to be in a, a forward-thinking mode 
where I'm thinking about a lot of different things, uh, not just testing out specific layers. So I want to think about all the functions that I want access to and where I might put them. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to continue building these, these uh, action layers. And we're going to start with L. So what's L going to be? You know what L is going to be? L. Actually, let's throw these on, on this D-pad before we get too much further. We're going to put these on a hold action layer. L. This one needs to be U. I need to lower the sensitivity of the big picture config for the gyro a bit, but it's usable. Um, R and D. All right. We're gonna change the layout from eight-way overlap to four-way no overlap, because we don't want to accidentally be, you know, launching multiple action layers. Though that wouldn't, well, I don't know. But yeah, that's not what we want to do. Uh, joystick mouse, this is fine. This is what we want. We want to use our mouse on the desktop, though we're not gonna use this a lot. We're gonna change this from cross to circle. Um, we're going to, change the stick response curve to extra wide. This is all preference. And I, I'm only doing this because I think this is gonna be comfortable for my hands. We're probably gonna change a lot of this. Uh, mouse sensitivity, we're gonna increase that. We're gonna make that too sensitive because we wanna, we wanna get around real fast on that desktop with our joystick. And then we're gonna use the gyro to really do what we need to do. All right, so what's next? Now we're going to go into our L layer. L is our left layer. Um, we're accessing L by hitting the left button on the D-pad. L, L, L for letter, for letters, for dealing with letters, for writing a letter, for reading a letter. L for letters, letters, L for letter, letters. It's a letter. You're dealing with a letter, you're making a letter. You're reading a letter. You're writing a letter. All right. You're never going to forget this now. Here's what we do. L. Just, just watch. We're going to make, we're not going to do that yet. I'm not going to do this one yet, because it's going to throw you off if I do this one first. Because this is really going to be a secondary function, which is really going to be kind of a primary function. It's going to be perceived as a primary function, but it's really not a primary function. It's going to be a secondary function. This will be a primary function in another layer, but in this layer, it's not. I'm not going to tell you about it yet. It's not a big secret, but it's just important for the flow of this. So we're going to go circle. Is that circle? No, square. Damn it. Square. We're going into square, and we're going to change square. Square is going to be, we're going to remove here, go, go, go this way. We're going to go control. We hit triangle, right? So we can do multiple buttons at the same time. Um, yeah, that's what we're doing. Multiple buttons at the same time. You do that by hitting triangle, and then you toggle multi-button multi, multi -button mode on. Now multi-button mode is on. We're going to go control, C. All right, copy, right? Because this is our L layer for dealing with letters. You copy letters all the time. I know I do. And we're gonna change interruptible to off. That way this will fire no matter what. And underneath this, underneath it, it's just a, a way of speaking, but we're gonna add an additional function to a long press. And what is it gonna be? Another multi-button, control X for cut. So the idea is you tap it, you copy the text. You hold it, you cut the text. It makes a lot of sense and because you can copy and then cut without messing up the cut function. We stack them and we can remove the uh, interruptible feature on copy so that copy always fires no matter what very quickly. So there's not additional delay. You really don't want more delay than you have to deal with. Um, so we're actually gonna even decrease this long press time, put it up two ticks, maybe three ticks. We'll do three ticks. I like doing two ticks because I can, I got a real fast thumb, but We'll, we'll do three. 
if you leave it on the default, it's just too long. It just takes too long. You don't want to be holding, you don't want to be holding the button that long every time you want to cut something. All right. Oh, what happened? Where did my, where did the binding go? All right. Let's do another one. Regular press, control, C. Interruptible, off. So do you see how this works? You tap the button, you copy, you hold the button, you cut. And then over here, circle, I was right. We're, we're gonna delete that. Oh, go back in. Add one, delete the original. I have a lot of weird superstitions about the Steam Controller configurator. Bear with me. Sometimes I just do things over and over and over or remove things and then put them back and then remove them and put them back and remove them and put them back because it's complicated. Now, next we're gonna go Control V. Circle is gonna be our paste button. Interruptible, now nah, we're, we're gonna leave interruptible on. That doesn't create a delay unless you have another function like a double press or a long press. In that case, it will create a delay of however long your long press time is or however long your double tap time is. But we're not doing that. You know, and I should say, if you would rather, instead of a long press to get cut, you know, uh, beneath control, if you would rather, you could put it on a double press. I, I wouldn't suggest that though, because that just, it, I don't like that. That feels strange to my thumb. Maybe your thumb is different. And up, uh, not up, triangle. Triangle's gonna be, I show you, I show you, I show you right now, watch. Triangle is gonna be control A. Select all. So now we've got cut, copy, paste, select all, and you probably knew where we were going with this. Enter, because enter is very important. And you may want to be able to access enter multiple times in multiple layers, depending on what you're doing, because these layers are based on function. It's not based on, oh, well, we already have enter on a different layer. Well, who cares? If it's relevant to that layer, put it there. And if it's relevant to another layer, put it there as well. Because you'll find you won't like having to switch back and forth in between layers um, all the time. So if you have certain functions that you can have multiple times based on the context, it, it makes sense and it, and it really helps speed up the workflow. So we're gonna put enter there, return, I should say. And now remember, we're holding L to access this. And when we're doing that, we're gonna change a couple of, uh, of other things here. All right, left shoulder. Are you ready? Undo, right shoulder, redo. Well, what, what, is, what is redo? It, it depends on the app, right? But on, on a lot of apps, it's control Y. On a lot of apps, it's control shift Y. Or control shift Z, I mean. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go control shift Z. And then we're going to add another activator. Long press, control, oops, control shift Y. Now we, we have best of both worlds. The same button does both. And we just determine which one we wanna fire via a long press or a short press. And uh, if you ask me, it's, it's pretty snazzy. We're gonna decrease this long press time. Three ticks. Wait, no, no, we don't need the shift. We just need control. God dang it, come on. Control Y. There we go. We're gonna leave interruptible on because if there's a program where control Y is uh, undo, well, perhaps control shift Z might be a different function. We don't want to accidentally fire that while we're trying to get to this alternate um, undo. What I'm gonna put here on this little menu button is not an 
an, the app switcher because we're, we're accessing the app switcher from the base config or the base layer. We're not accessing the app switcher from within this layer. Within this layer, we have our own things to do. So I'm going to put this Alt Control Shift P, which is in my case, my um, screenshot button. And uh, yeah, so I, I like I like taking screenshots. I'm a screenshot guy. So I like having that there somewhere accessible. And this is a good layer for it. Like the L layer is a good layer for putting screenshot. I don't know why it feels good right now. We might change that later again, but no, this feels good. We're gonna add over here on this joystick, we're gonna make the right joystick within this layer. We're gonna go page up and page down and home and end. Four way, no overlap. And we're gonna increase this dead zone quite a bit. Just so that, you know, with joysticks, sometimes if you pull it over and then you let go, it might snap past the dead zone and then hit the other button, the other function. We don't want it to do that. It's not, it's not a super important thing to always be mindful of, but the way I might use page up and page down, I might flick that joystick. So I kind of want a larger dead zone in this case. And it's not very important for it to, you know, fire right away as soon as you start moving it. So it doesn't seem like a bad idea. All right, you know, this is really coming together. This left joystick, we're really not gonna be using in this, in this layer. And in, in any of these, uh, these four layers here, we're not really using this left joystick because we're gonna be holding these buttons here. I would like to be able to control the lights. If I could change the color that emits from the, uh, the light in this controller, that would be awesome because each layer would then have a different corresponding light. And if that were the case, I might not even put it on a, um, well, maybe I, no, no, I don't even think I would. I, I don't think that I would do a hold. I think I would do a tap to access the layer because it would be obvious what layer I'm in based on the color. Well, then again, I don't know, maybe I wouldn't because I'm not necessarily looking down at the color, but it would be nice. It would be nice if I can change the color depending on the action layer that I'm inside. Just a thought. All right, so we're not gonna do anything with this right now. Now L, right? So we're in our, our letter layer and we're doing letter kind of stuff. So what else would we like to be able to do? This is really where you can start getting creative because we already have left click and right click available and easily accessible and very usable because of the dampening that we're employing. So in this case, what kind of additional functions would we like to have on our triggers that sort of correspond with what our index fingers are used to doing anyway? Well, more clicking. So let's go in here. This is where things get really fun. Um, I keep saying that because this is all extremely fun to me. I can't explain it. I can't explain it. Very rewarding, very, very fun. This is my idea of a good time. So <laughs> I, I appreciate uh, any, anyone watching this right now. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out. And, uh, and I hope you're gonna learn something along the way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put, we're gonna go, we're gonna go start press. Okay, look, we're not gonna do regular press. Watch, you're gonna like this. I really think you're gonna like this a lot. We're gonna go start press. We're gonna go left click. Leave all this normal. Normally, I would turn this haptic off. Actually, I'll go ahead and turn that off anyway, because uh, I, I definitely don't want these haptics here, even if they worked. So, and then we're gonna go left mouse, and we're gonna go, we're, we're, you see what we're doing? Two start presses, same function, and we're gonna increase this start del fire start delay. We're gonna go two ticks. Now we'll go three ticks. Uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll, we want that as low as possible, but I think we might need three ticks. Maybe not, but we'll see. Okay, then that's good. Now, on the left trigger, we're gonna do something similar. We're gonna go start press, left button. Start press, left button. Turn these damn haptics off. Now, three, right, right? We just recreated what we did on the right trigger. We're gonna go another one. Left click, turn the damn haptics off. 
six ticks, because the last one was three. We're staggering these. This is gonna perform a triple click. <sighs> oh, man. All right. We need to go over here. We need to go into our, oh, where are we? Over here. Turn mouse on over here. Always on, that's fine. Really doesn't matter in this case. Um, yeah, it, it actually really doesn't matter, so put it on high. All right, these are all defaulted now, that's fine. Um, defaulted to our base layer is what, you know what I mean. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here, both trigger, soft pull, full pull dampening. So, a soft pull or a full pull, either trigger will deaden our gyro. It'll stop the gyro from moving. And that's gonna be very useful in this case, in this layer. Okay, let me show you what that's for. We will jump over here real quick and I'm gonna show you what that's for. All right, things are already working. Our, our, we got our, our scroll wheels working. All right, so if we jump into something, now let's say you wanna select a word. Now typically, you know, even if you're using a gyro, almost especially if you're using a gyro, it would be kind of difficult to select something. Now, because we dampened our, our gyro, we deadened the gyro when we're clicking with a soft pull, it makes it a bit easier to do a double click. I mean, a double click is not hard to do, but doing it without moving the mouse can be hard when, you know, you're moving around a lot. But because we're, uh, we're deadening that gyro, it makes it a lot easier. But that's not even how we're gonna double click. That's not how you're gonna double click to select a word. That's not how. The way you're gonna do it is you're gonna go into the L layer by just hitting left on the, the D-pad, and now you're just gonna click. And anywhere you click, it's gonna select that word. And it is so nice, it is so consistent and reliable, and it makes it so easy. Now let's say you wanna select this whole paragraph. Well, instead of using the right trigger in the, in the L layer, we're gonna use the left trigger. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, okay, hold on. Okay, here's what we need to do. Do you see that? Too slow. You can see it selecting the one and then, and then sort of branching out and selecting the whole paragraph. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into it and we're gonna drop these delays. We're gonna drop that one, and we're gonna drop this two. Oop. All right, now let's try that. It's much faster. Let's see how far we can actually take this. Let's drop this. So each, each click is one tick. Oh, that works, it works really well. Look at that. Look at how quickly we can select layers or letters when we're in our letter layer, our L layer. We can select whole paragraphs of text. And because we're in that L layer, we can easily go boom, copy. Select copy, select copy. You just want the word or use the right trigger. Boom, select the word, select the word. Or you can go select that word. You wanna make a selection within this, no sweat. You can grab that, the last, the last word of a sentence that you wanna grab, release that layer now, and then hold shift and click up here. There. Now you've got your selection. It's so nice. It's so handy. And it just works. All right, now that we know that we can make that delay much smaller, we're gonna put this down to a, a one tick. And let's just double check, double check that that, yep, 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 that's working great. Fantastic. Okay. This is coming along nicely. I'm happy with this so far. We're, we're making good progress. We'll, we'll, we'll demonstrate a lot of the other functions and stuff as we get further. So now we're gonna move on to the, the R layer. Now the R layer is sort of like, um, I have nothing. I have nothing for R. I don't. I don't know. R is what is is a really useful layer 
We use it for Chrome. We use it for uh, for a browser, for whatever your browser is. You know, I, I uh, on on. It, you'll see. You'll see. It's not just for that, but it's it's also for like uh, you know your file manager, right? For if you have like a tab file manager and you navigate through your tabs, things like that. You're, you'll see. And this is for me a layer that I will spend a lot of time in. This is the equivalent to like my um, like my right grip layer on my Steam controller. So if you're familiar with that, we're sort of recreating that here, but things are gonna be a little different. Now we definitely wanna turn the gyro on. We wanna default all of these. And, uh, and now we're gonna go over here. Uh, actually, let's start over here. Actually, let's start here. Yes. All right, we're going to put another scroll wheel on the right joystick. Our forward binding is going to be control, shift. No, no, no. No, 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 no. that's not it. It's going to be control, shift, tab. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then our back is going to be control, tab. That's, that's wrong. It needs to be the other way around. It needs to be control, tab, and... Control Shift Tab. Increase the sensitivity. No spin friction. And uh, yeah, and let me show you what this is gonna do. Let's um, let's open up a bunch of tabs. All right, we got a bunch of tabs open now. And. Uh, we're gonna navigate through them. Look at us, look at us navigating through our tabs. Look at this. You know how I'm doing this? I'm just, I'm just turning. I'm just spinning that, that scroll wheel. And it works really well, really, really well. And, um, and I've got my left mouse or my left joystick as a scroll wheel, the like actual scroll wheel, scroll wheel. And, uh, and it works. And then when I go right, the right joystick becomes a little scroll wheel for the uh, for the tabs. And now some people might prefer to arrow over. And of course, that's extremely easy to do. You would just go in here and instead of putting a scroll wheel, you would do a D-pad and you would make your adjustments here. You would go control shift tab and your right would be Control tab, and you can even add things to up and down. I would be careful what you put here though. If you put like a close tab here on down, which might make sense because you're closing the tab, navigating and then closing the tab, you want to be careful. You don't want to accidentally close tabs. You know, maybe maybe 85% of the time, maybe 70% of the time, it's not a big deal. But there's gonna be that 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 time where you've got a, a bunch of text written in the in the the, the web page and you accidentally close the tab and even though you can reopen the tab all your text is gone yeah so I'd be very careful with what you put on up and down um, but I'm not going to do that I'm not going to use this I, I like the scroll wheel function and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a scroll wheel click action this is going to be my closed tab because when I'm scrolling through my tabs I, uh, I want to be able to quickly close the tab that I'm done with but what I'll do is I will also do a long press, and the long press will be Control Shift T, and that will be to reopen the previously closed tab. Let me show you what that's gonna, gonna look like. So we're, we're looking around, right? Um, I'm looking at this game, uh, and then I, I close the tab, and I wanna reopen it. I just hold that closed tab button, and the tab opens back up. I mean, it's 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 pretty simple. It's pretty basic, but but it works and it makes sense and it feels good. All right, now what are we gonna do? We're gonna go over here, and we we're gonna add some fun things over here. We're gonna make triangle our refresh button. So F5. Oops, wrong one. F5. 
All right. And now square is going to be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this and it's not because it has anything to do with the reasoning, just because it's sort of a coincidence. Square is going to be open new tab and open, well, no. No, maybe it shouldn't be, now that I think about it. Square should be open new window, because it's a square. So yeah, let's do that. We're gonna go Control N to open a new window. And in fact, since we can, let's just go ahead and add a long press, and we're gonna go Control Shift N to open a new incognito window. Now, if you're using a different browser, and these, these uh, shortcuts are different, obviously you're gonna have to put in different shortcuts. And um, even if you, if you wanna use these same functions, you may, you may need to make modifications depending on your system or whatever it is. Again, this is not necessarily something that, I, that I, I'm gonna put out there for like everybody to go and like use this config. I mean, I'll make it available somehow, but I really would rather encourage everybody to, to dig in here and spend some time making it your, making it your own. You're going to learn a lot about um, how you use, you know, a, a controller, how you input and interface with a computer. And even if you think, well, you know, I just don't care that much about controlling my desktop with a joystick or with a gamepad, I totally get it. I totally get it. And I'm probably not going to um, spend any real world time, you know, like navigating my computer with this controller, but I will spend time doing it. You know, there will be times when I'm sitting back and I'm playing a game and I do need to navigate my computer and you can say, well, just use the default. Just use the default controller uh, config. No, I enjoy making these configs and you learn a lot about what's possible and what these features and functions do that you then carry over into your game configs. That's why this is a really good practice. So, all right, we're going to uh, over here. Come on, we gotta do this again. All right, we're gonna add Control T for new tab. And if you wanted, I mean, you could do, you could go, all right, we add another one. You can add, you can go Control Shift T to open the previous closed tab. Maybe that, that makes sense having it there as well. And this is one of the things that I do with games a lot is I will, if I'm, if I'm not super sure about something, I might put it in multiple places and then see which one I end up using the most. And then I can go and remove the other one. And by that time, I probably have an idea for something that I can add to that previous placement. So in this case, I'll go ahead and put this here. Maybe, I, maybe I'll enjoy you know, using that. Maybe I'll make sense because we're using this button for opening a new tab and then using it to reopen a closed tab might, might make contextual contextual sense. So we'll see how it goes. Um, and then down, uh, down X. We're gonna, this may be, um, this may be less relevant or useful depending on how, how we get by with keyboard stuff on this controller. But we're gonna go control L and um, control L. That's gonna highlight the address bar. If we're on a website and we wanna copy the URL, that will, that will easily get us to that address bar, highlight that, that uh, address for us and we can copy it, whatever we wanna do. So we're gonna put that there and we're gonna add another one. We're gonna go long press, control E, which is a, um, I, don't, I don't know, this is, this is very random. In fact, I probably shouldn't even put this here because it might just be, yeah, that, that, that's just going to confuse people. So we're going to we're going to keep Control L there to access our address bar. And what you could do, you know, I think typing on this controller is going to be a nightmare if I'm being honest. And typing on the Steam controller really isn't that bad because those touch pads and that touch keyboard is kind of fantastic, especially when you modify it and you you tweak it um, to be sort of more like how your smartphone is. Um, but with this, it's probably going to be a little less useful. So in that case, I'm not going to do what I'm going to show you right now. But what, what you might do is make interruptible off and then go here. You're going to add a, a second regular press, 
with interruptible off as well, and you're going to add keyboard. Maybe put a little delay on here, though. A couple of ticks. So that we're sure that this one fires first. And what that's going to do, yeah, do you see? It's going to select the um, address bar and pull up the keyboard. We're, we would need to tweak it a little bit to make it so it maintains that selection. But we would have to make a, a number of changes to our config for our keyboard. But we're not going to get into that today. So, so this is not a big deal. This is not. This is just sort of um, outside of the box thinking that that I want to point out that, that maybe you can employ in your configs. So, all right, let's let's get back over here. Um, I'm going to lower the sensitivity just a couple of ticks on the uh, the tab scrolling. And then I like to put over here, add activator. I'm going to put full screen there on this button. That'll be good. OK. So now, now this is great. This is a, a nice way to fly through our tabs very accurately, very reliably. And then we can close them. We can reopen them. And everything just works. All right, let's get back into it. Moving on to the next layer. In fact, let's do something cool while we're in here with the, uh, the touchpad on this controller. We're going to make this a scroll wheel, and we're going to make it horizontal. And just for fun, let's put this here. We're going to navigate our tabs using this touchpad. So now when we're in the layer, I can slide my thumb across the touchpad. And it's still, it's still doing the mouse. That's sort of a bug, but we can fix it. But you know that, that's kind of a neat way of navigating through your, your tabs. And that's essentially what I'm doing with the Steam controller with the touchpad. And it's awesome. But this touchpad is not as useful in that regard. So I wouldn't bake that in here. Um, all right, you know, and um, and just since we're here, you know, you have control, you have shift, you have alt. Um, so I can hit control and scroll and just, you know, expand things very quickly. Um, enlarge, I mean, zoom in. So it's kind of neat. Very nice having that there. All right. Oh, yeah, I keep setting this. And then it goes back, as you can see. <laughs> not super useful, though, so we're not going to spend a lot of time troubleshooting the touchpad. All right, now we're going to go to up. Up is going to be like uh, like I don't, like utility, like a utility layer. Uh, I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll call it utility layer. We're going to put a scroll wheel. As you can see, I like scroll wheels. I think scroll wheels are very good options for um, for joysticks for all the reasons I already stated. So we're going to go volume up and we're going to go volume down. Increase the sensitivity for sure. Turn off spin friction. And spin friction just means that if you if you do it real fast, then it'll be like um, you know, like like it'll 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 have a little bit of a tail. It'll it'll it's almost like a like a scroll wheel that it keeps scrolling until it slows. Like, what is that called? You know, you know what I mean. I don't really like it, uh, especially not with a joystick, because that just feels weird, you know? So, all right, that's how we're accessing volume. And then a click on this is going to mute. And now this is going to be, you know, very user specific. Maybe you don't listen to a lot of music on your computer, or you don't use apps that use media um, button functions and stuff. And if that's the case, you can do something different here. But what I like to do is on uh, X, I like to go play, and then circle, stop. 
Um, actually, wait, wait, wait. Nope. This is going to be previous. Square is previous. Circle is next. And then on play, we're putting a long press for stop. Lowering that time. And what is, uh, what would we use? I guess, you know what, let's do this. Let's go previous track on, on Y or triangle, next track on circle, and we could do stop on square. That makes sense, that feels right. Yeah, this one's pretty simple. And the reason I don't have a lot of things to put on this layer is because I'm dealing with more action layers than I'm really used to dealing with. On the Steam controller, I, I have two layers. I have a grip layer, or a left grip layer, and a right grip layer. Technically, I have a lot more layers going on to facilitate various functions and things like that, but the main layers that I use is a left grip layer and a right grip layer. And here we have four. So it's, there's, there's trade-offs, but one of the benefits of this method is that we now have four action layers. So we can do things like put sort of arbitrary functions in different places just because we have room for them. Um, and what we're gonna do, actually, yeah, let's go back real quick. Before we continue with this utility layer, and essentially, this is this is pretty much done for now. But we're going to go back to R. And remember, this is our browser, our browser layer, the one with the new tabs and the tab scrolling and all that. There's another thing that I want to add here. And because we already have left click, right click, extremely accessible, very reliably accessible, we don't need to necessarily have those inside the layer either. So we can do something more interesting. We can put here middle mouse button. Because I use the middle mouse button all the time when I'm in a browser. Opening up tabs in a new layer, or, or, or opening up links in a new tab, closing my tab by clicking the mouse wheel, um, the middle mouse button. I call it a mouse wheel, because it's technically a mouse wheel, but yeah, so we're gonna put that here. And remember, we have our mouse that is dampened. Um, we could just increase this to the full pull because we're not, well, no, we, we may do, do some dragging with that wheel. So. So we'll just keep it on a soft pull so that we still have our dragging available. Um, and our right, our right or mouse, right mouse, our left mouse, our left trigger with our right mouse button. We're not gonna change. I, I can't think of anything useful to put there right now. I don't wanna just add anything arbitrarily, but as I use this you know, over the next few weeks, I may find things that would be handy to have there when I'm inside of this layer. All right, so let's go over here now to the D layer. The D layer is the down layer. The down layer is pretty important. It's pretty, it's pretty common. We're gonna spend the time um, in the down layer. And, and I'll show you why. And th it, this is the reason why it's the down layer because it's very close to the joystick. And um, I mean, technically, I think the R button, you know, right here is closer to the joystick than down. Um, but either way, they're both close enough. And uh, you wouldn't want to have this on up, I don't think. Not that it makes that big of a difference. I mean, we're really um, counting stars at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the down layer be a lot of the functions that we would have expected to be on a base layer. This is sort of going to be our base layer, sort of, for main desktop type functions, like I'll show you, uh, enter going to be here um, we're going to put we're going to put tab on circle we're going to put delete on square we may we may swap those in fact in fact we should swap those i think i would rather have those swapped tab it feels more like a square thing and deleting feels more like a circle thing yeah and now this is again going to be a, a, a time where we're going to do multiple functions that, are, that already exist on other layers. Because when we're in this layer, we may want to have access to that function and we may not want to go into another layer to grab it. We want it available in this layer. And when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about shaving time, but I'm talking about shaving fractions of a second. 
none of this takes a long time, but those fractions of a second really add up over time. So we're gonna put select all on this, uh, on this layer as well. Even though we already have select all on our L layer, we're gonna put select all on this layer as well because we will use it when we're accessing this layer. We will find that we want to use it and we won't want to have to hit the left button. It, it sounds ridiculous because it's really not that big of a burden to hit the left button, but we need to replenish our space fluids. Come on. Okay. Oh, hold on. We're doubling up on this function because we're gonna want it here. Select all, here it is. Technically, this is on another layer and this is on another layer, but this is the layer where you're really gonna be using it. And here's one of the reasons why, because our right joystick is about to become the very, very important arrow keys. This is how we're accessing our arrow keys most of the time. And it's gonna be really, really wonderful. I'm gonna re-increase that dead zone for the same reason that we increased that dead zone earlier, because we don't wanna be flicking across to our arrows and then it going back and forth because we're hitting right and then it's bouncing back and clicking left. So we can increase that even, even more if we want. Uh, a click action, ooh, nah, eh. I don't think, I mean, I can't think of anything to put there. Maybe you can come up with something. If you do, be sure you let me know. There we go, we got our arrow keys. It's gonna be a very, very nice place. Um, now our triggers or our, our bumpers or our shoulder buttons, whatever you wanna call them. This is gonna be, our forward one is gonna be space. And then our back one is gonna be back space. Back space and space. These feel good there. I like them there and I want them there. Uh, there's a few more things that we're going to do. Oh, Hornetta. <laughs> oh. Oh. I, I'm so glad that you asked this question. I have... I have... a bit of a history um, using game pads as MIDI controllers. Most of the, the time that I've spent with game pads outside of the Steam controller has been in a MIDI controller capacity. And while it has been a while since I've done anything like that, um, I am really, really excited to explore the possibilities of integrating a, uh, a gamepad in with my, uh, my music stuff and seeing what that looks like these days. So while I can't give you, a, you know, like a hard, hard answer or a hard yes that this is, is possible to use a PS5 controller as a MIDI controller, I can absolutely um, say that it is possible to use a gamepad and thus I don't see any reason why you couldn't use the PS5 controller. Um, and I'll make a video, we'll do a show and uh, we'll talk about all that kind of stuff. And uh, I don't know when, but, but we'll do that. And it'll be really fun because there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. And now that our controllers have gyros, which is not something that I had experience with back when I was doing the controller MIDI stuff, I think there's gotta be a lot of really neat ways to use a gyro to control your audio software. And I'm super excited about that. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up. And if anyone else has interest in that sort of thing, definitely let me know because I know it's kind of it's kind of niche, even though the Tricom is kind of niche. So you guys like niche things and I really appreciate that because obviously I do as well. But if there's more interest for that, we might bump that up the agenda um, and I'd be super excited to do that. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it'd be like a handheld theremin, right? 
I mean, you use a, a diatonic transposer and you keep everything in, in the right key and you can do some, some interesting stuff with your note mapping so that you can create some really unique melodies and oh, dude, there's so much we can do. There's so much. All right. I don't want to get distracted though in thinking about that, but I, but I do want to get distracted and think about that because that's the kind of thing that I'll stay up all night long just thinking about and then jumping into Trello and creating 30 different cards or 30 different ideas and bullet points for, for different things that we could try. Maybe, maybe most of them wouldn't work, but, but it's fun coming up with stuff like that. So, okay, carrying on. We're in our D layer and we're gonna make this also the same sort of double click function that we have, um, that we've used previously. Because this is gonna be the layer that we're, that we're, that we go into to like navigate like files and open folders and stuff like that. If we could use the other layers, sure. There's like, there's no rules against it. But the idea is to sort of build these layers sort of um, use, use case specific, if that makes sense. So we're gonna go left click, on a start press and then another left click on a start press, kill the haptics, give it one tick delay, kill the haptics. We, ah, I still feel like one tick delay just isn't, isn't enough, but it is, it's working. So this is great. All right, and then left is gonna be, this is gonna be middle mouse. And, and there you go. That's our, that's our D layer, right? Yeah, that's it. And then we've got our mod, our mod layer, which was the first one that we set up. And so the neat thing about this is, um, here, let me show you. So let's say, let's say for example, that you wanted to, um, you wanna go, oh, you know what? We do, we do need to adjust. Let's do this real quick. We need to go, all right, like, uh, let me just point out real quick what just now happened. You guys didn't notice. Um, I alt tabbed over and I didn't use this button. You know, this little, this little button right here. I didn't use that button. I used left joystick click. Now this is very, this controller is very new to me. This whole, this layout is extremely new to me, obviously. Um, and, but the fact that my thumb just went there I didn't click that button, even though if I looked at the controller and I thought in my head, hey, what's the alt tap button? That little icon, that little three line icon would, would remind me that that's the alt tap button. But not looking at the controller, my thumb just clicked down and it was the right choice. So that's an example of how sometimes you just need to listen to your body, listen to your thumbs. They have a lot to say. So, all right, I wanted to point that out. And you may notice those things. And you may notice you doing that and accidentally firing the wrong function. And you'll think, ah, damn it. Every time I try to alt tab, I do a print screen. Why do I keep doing it? Don't worry about it. Just change it. Just change print screen to alt tab. And then there you go. Like, like just lean into what your body's naturally doing. It's when you're fighting it that it creates a lot of discord inside and things can get, get chaotic and unsettled. Um, you be, be, be nice to your thumbs and to your hands. They're, they're, they're trying. Okay, so we need to make an adjustment to the D layer, because currently the double click is not working. We need to slow it down. And I had a feeling that this was gonna be the case. It's not a problem though. We just need to add, let's add one more tick and give it a try. Oh, that worked. It worked, it worked, it worked. So if I want to open something, I can open it super easily. Look at that. Very reliable. I get, I'm, look at me. I'm moving this gyro around and then boom. I, I want to open something and just like keep moving it, keep moving it, keep moving it, boom. Look at it. Even though I'm moving the controller around, it doesn't matter because the, the gyro is dampened. It's deadened as soon as I soft pull that right trigger. And the soft pull fires a double click. And I'm not thinking double click, single click. I'm just going, well, this layer is my open the thing layer. It's the open the thing button layer. And it just does what it's supposed to do. Um, it, it's such a huge, huge difference from the default config that you start with. 
and oh, it is so nice. Okay, so now we know that this needs to have a two-click, two-click thing going on, at least for double-clicking to open things. We didn't really have a problem when we were doing a double-click to select a word or select a paragraph with a triple-click. That delay, that one-tick delay on each of those stacked uh, clicks was fine, at least in Chrome. But if you notice that it's not actually firing correctly, then go in there and do what we just did. So, for example, in our right layer, or was a yeah, the left layer, you go in here and you just move this up one tick. And because this is for selecting text, we didn't really need to do that. It works great. It works. And you, you're, it's so fast. Like that delay is, um, it's so fast. You're not gonna notice it. You're not. You're not gonna feel like, oh man, two ticks. That takes so much longer now. Like, you're really not gonna notice it. But the idea is, you don't want it to be longer than it has to be. So you always start with it very low, and then you sort of work your way up. All right, so that's our D layer. And jumping back over into the uh, file browser. Yeah, and another thing is you might find that you like just using the gyro. So when you pull this Alt-Tab menu up, you might find you just like pointing and, you know, and, and making your selections like this, just clicking on things. And that's totally good. That's wonderful and fine and, and fantastic. And that's a good way of navigating and it's it's always fun to use the gyro. So I, I encourage it, I encourage it all. Um, one thing that I'm feeling I need to do though right now is I need to go into the app switcher layer and I need to decrease the sensitivity on this scroll wheel joystick. Let's try again. Yeah, that feels that feels better. All right. So what else? Here's a very important thing. And, and it's, it's this gyro enable button. We, this is one of the first things that we set. Right stick click turns gyro off. This is important because we are using uh, what is commonly referred to as an always on gyro, even though it is not necessarily an always on gyro, as you can see, always on is its own setting that we are not using. And I would agree with anyone who says always on gyro, that's a nightmare. And you're right, it is. But do something like this. Put a dang button to kill your gyro and you put it on your mouse right here. Your right joystick is your mouse. You press it down and it stops your gyro. It is so useful and so logical and it makes so much sense in the brain. It feels very weird. It feels not weird. Like it feels weird in that in the sense that you feel like a, a, a further physical connection uh, with your computer because you see the mouse moving and it's moving based on your hand movements. And then when you press the mouse, which is the joystick down, when you press it down, the mouse stops moving. I mean, it's moving if I, it'll still move if I move the joystick. Um, that's not a problem. The, the point is to stop the gyro so that you can reorient your hands. So like, if you're like, oh, this is so weird. Always on gyro, derp, it doesn't work. You just click it down, bud, and then you reset your hands. And look at that, it's nice, it's perfect. You can use that if you wanna stop on something and click something. You really don't need to because the gyro will also completely deaden when you make that click, but you could do this if you wanted to. Um, but I definitely recommend putting that there. And, I, and on the Steam controller, I do the same thing with the right touchpad. So even in a game, you click the right touchpad in the center and it will deaden the gyro. And of course, you click the right touchpad anywhere around the outer edges, and it's gonna go into a D-pad and do all sorts of interesting things, but you can always stop the gyro by clicking down on the touchpad, in this case, on the right joystick, essentially on your mouse. You click down on your mouse, you press it down, 
and it stops. Just like in the real world, if you put pressure on your mouse, it's not gonna move. Makes sense. It feels very comfortable. One of the things that we have is this action layer or this uh, app switcher layer button. And very useful, very useful, probably to someone. I'm gonna keep it there though, because I don't have anything better to put on this button for now. And one benefit of having it there is it lets us access the app switcher with our right hand rather than accessing it with our left hand via a left joystick click. And what that means is now I'm holding the button down. I can scroll through using the left joystick just like I could before or with the, with the right joystick. I'm using the left joystick in the same way. But I also now have arrow keys. So if you would rather navigate through your you know, open applications with arrow keys, uh, you can do that very easily. I'm gonna open up a few more tabs or a few more, actually, let's um, close these and we're just gonna pull these out. All right, so now we've got a bunch of windows open. And as you can see, I can scroll through these pretty quickly. I can get to where I wanna go, um, but I can also do it this way. Same function, but now I have arrow keys on the left if I want to arrow through these. Not a, I'm not a huge fan, even though this could be faster sometimes. But, I mean, once you use this for a while, you'll, your, your thumb will know how far to turn to get to where it wants to go. You won't even really have to think about it. And if you do find yourself having to really think about it and really be like, oh, I'm overshooting or I'm undershooting or I, I never get it the first time when I, when I try, to like go to like the, the you know, if I want to get to this uh, settings right here and I'm up here, you know, it, it's really easy to, to get there. But if you're finding that you're overshooting, just go in there and tweak that sensitivity. You, you'll be able to find a sensitivity where just your default movement uh, just sort of fits. And um, there's a lot that can be said about sort of like really training yourself and, and, and disciplining your, your fingers to, to, to accommodate your settings. Um, but again, my whole thing is make your settings accommodate your fingers. And if your finger is derpy and it only wants to do a half turn, then hey, increase your sensitivity so that your finger doesn't have to do a full turn. But if your finger wants to do a lot of turns, lower that sensitivity and let your finger have a good time. There's nothing wrong with that. There's one more thing that we need to do. And I'm gonna throw this. This could go, this could go different places, but I but this is what I'm gonna do. This button here, this is going to be escape. And it is also going to be a long press. I'm gonna keep the long press time on this. Well, no, nah, not really. We'll, we'll do three ticks. This is gonna be Alt F4. Definitely don't put <laughs> hold to repeat on. And so now you uh, you have an escape. You hit you hit that button and it escapes. And if you want to um, close the window, obviously, you just hold escape and then it alt F4s that window or application. Um, it's uh, it's not something I, I do a whole lot, like alt tabbing, you know, but I do do it. And I would say I do it often. So because of that, I don't know if this is the best place for it because it's not very comfortable. The problem with these buttons up here is the layout just feels pretty bad because these buttons are shorter than the face buttons and they're sh it's shorter than the D-pad buttons. And because of that, you really have to be mindful of your thumb because it can be very easy to accidentally hit triangle when you're trying to hit this uh, menu button. Or uh, in this, this case, the escape button. You could easily hit up when you're trying to hit the escape button. Wouldn't be the end of the world, but you just want to be sure that 
you don't have functions over there that could be detrimental if you were to accidentally press them at the same time. And this is one of the reasons why I'm not gonna use this as my app switcher in the long run. I'm gonna use this left joystick click as my app switcher. Um, but I'm gonna keep that there until I can come up with something better to put there. And as far as escape goes, that may be a function that I just don't use so often that I need it somewhere more convenient, but it might be right on that line. So as I use this config, don't be surprised is if, if in a week or in two weeks, I have an update and I say I no longer use that button, you know, for escape and I put escape somewhere else, somewhere more convenient. Um, but for the time being, that's where I'm gonna keep it. And I, and I really enjoy having escape and Alt F4 sort of stacked. It's a, it's a nice combination, I think. Um, because you're not gonna accidentally, there's not a lot of times where you're really holding down escape, right? I can't think of any, any time when you'd be holding down escape. Um, and you definitely wouldn't wanna be like repeating Alt F4. So yeah, I think it makes sense. I think it works. One thing that we're gonna do though is certain things you do wanna repeat. And, and in that case, I'm gonna show you how, how we would do that. So what would we necessarily repeat? Our arrows. Yeah, that's for sure. We would repeat these all the time. So we're gonna go interruptible off because we don't mind this firing in front of the other in front of the other one. We're gonna go long press and we're gonna go two ticks. Um, actually, let's leave the haptic alone for now. We're gonna go hold to repeat on. Oops, and we're gonna do that for all of these. Long press, right, one, two, hold to repeat on, go back over here, make sure interruptible is turned off. Or, I mean, you, can, you don't have to turn interruptible off, but you might as well, because what'll happen is when you hit the button, it, there'll just be a little bit of a delay before it goes, you know, into a, before it does, be, fires the actual action. Um, not a problem necessarily, but in this case, there's no reason for that since you're already firing that function. Uh, it's the way a keyboard, you know, works anyway. Off, uh, long press, two ticks, hold to repeat on, interruptible off, long press, left, two ticks, hold to repeat on. Okay, perfect. What else, what else, what else? Return, that might be one that we will, that we might wanna hold the button down on. So we'll go long press, two ticks, enter, hold to repeat on. Delete, that's another one. So we'll go long press, delete, set this to two ticks, hold to repeat on. What is this, tab? Mm, I don't know, what, should we do that for tab? Nah, I mean maybe, but nah, let's not. I don't think we need to, certainly not for select all. Backspace and space, we, we absolutely wanna have a turbo option for. If you're new to using the Steam Controller Configurator, you know, just FYI, you don't necessarily have to make your activation type selection the first thing that you do. So if you overshoot in your navigation, don't feel bad. Just go ahead and set the binding and then go up there and turn that to a, to a long press. It'll maintain that binding. Two ticks, hold to repeat on. And we're gonna do that on backspace as well. Two ticks. Hold to repeat on. Make sure that interruptible is turned off. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. Okay. And then in the mod, we could do it with these arrows too, so that, yeah, I mean, I, I, I won't really be accessing the, uh, the D-pad when I'm, oh, you know what? No, I will. Yeah, I will. In the mod? Yeah, absolutely. I'm thinking the app switcher. No, this is important though. We definitely want, want this set up as well. So we're gonna go, and I'll show you what this is, what this will be used for. It may seem redundant, but it, it's contextually relevant. 
Um, so we're going to go, what is it, left? Are we on left? Yeah. Two ticks. Pull to repeat on. Interruptible off. Cool. Interruptible off. Long press. Right. Are we on right? Yeah. Interruptible off, long press, down. Hey, Nick Sage, how's it going, my friend? It's good to see you. Welcome back. Um, yeah, we're, we're building a, uh, a, a desktop config for the PS5 controller. You know, it's no Steam controller, but I don't know. I think it's got some promise. Uh, certainly, uh, certainly, a good, good desktop navigation tool, you know, as far as gamepads go. We're just, we're just about wrapped up as well. And uh, I'm going to post this config in the Steam Controller channel on the Tricom. So anyone that wants to try it, go for it. And, uh, and if, you, if you ever wanted a very, very in-depth, long-winded, you know, uh, tutorial, I guess, for building a desktop config. Uh, you know, I would, I would, I would highly recommend getting getting a, a large, large glass of water before you watch this video. And that's, that's about that. Down arrow, hold to repeat. And we're just putting the, the absolute finishing touches on this, putting our long press hold to repeats on our arrow keys and things like that. We definitely don't want any turbos or hold to repeats on these modifier buttons. So we're gonna leave those alone. And let me show this to you real quick. So let's say I wanna make selections, right? I can hold control. Um, let me see. Where is it at? Let's go back. Let's go back. There's one thing that I need to do Un under the mod layer. Well, no, maybe I won't. But this definitely needs to be on a mouse. All right, all right, that's good. So this mod layer, right? When you access it, your mode selection, your action layer selection, I should say, uh, D-pad becomes arrow keys with turbos and hold to repeat and all that stuff. And you also still have your scroll wheel. So I'm, I'm in the mod layer, even though I'm just hitting, I'm just holding square, but I'm in the mod layer, hitting control, and my scroll wheel is scrolling away. Everything's happening as it should. My arrows over here are now arrows. They're not mode shift selections or action layer selections. And then when I release, we're, we're back to normal. And we have all our functions, you know? Shift, control, alt. And of course, over here on the Windows key, the corded press so that we can do control alt as well as you know control shift or alt shift alt shift arrow control shift arrow control shift scroll wheel uh win key arrow like like this boom you see very <laughs> it's just it's so nice it's so useful um and 
I, I wouldn't even say that I'm fluent with this whatsoever yet. This is still very, very new, but but the point is, it's um, it's very usable. It's very comfortable. It makes a lot of sense. I don't think it's going to take a long time to, to get used to this. And so tell me, you know, when we began, it may have seemed strange to not put to not put your arrow keys on the D-pad or, or, or not put, you know, enter and space and all that over here on these face buttons. To, to be using these to access different, different action layers sort of seemed complicated or maybe not worth it, overly complex. But in practice, it's actually really nice. And, and it, works, it works really well, especially, um, you know, one of my favorite, favorite things is, is being able to navigate through all of my tabs. Um, I love it. It's it's really handy. It's <laughs> let's see. Hold on. There's one that we need to adjust. Middle mouse, right, soft pull. Yeah, that's correct. Oh, I see. I see what's happening. Okay, this is good. This is good. All right, what's happening right now is we're stuck in our mod layer. We are in our mod layer right now. Um, I and I know this because the left D-pad, the the D-pad, is uh, arrow keys, and it's not supposed to be. And I'm not holding a mod button. This can happen, and this isn't. I don't know if this is a bug, but I've experienced this this before. Now here's the solution: you go in here, and we're going to change these. Instead of a hold action, we're going to make it an apply. Actually, no, let's not do that. First, let's go into the mod layer, and we're going to make a release press. We're going to leave interruptible on. We're going to create a release press on each of these mod buttons. And the release press is going to remove the mod layer. This is one of those things that it might seem like tedious, overly complex it, this is not you're never going to notice this in action oops remove mod release press remove mod same thing here release press remove mod and then here as well release press Remove action layer, mod. And now what I think is happening is maybe when I'm in the mod layer, like I'm hitting the win key and uh, or X and uh, I'm firing the win key and I'm in the mod layer and then I'm arrowing and maybe when I release the win key, the arrowing, maybe I'm still holding the arrow button, right? When I release the windows key or the X button. And because of that, I'm maintaining an action within that action layer. So it's getting stuck. It's not reading the release call, the release action, which is sort of should be baked into, is inherent in the hold action layer function. The hold action layer function should be a start and a release. So in theory, I shouldn't have to be doing this, but I think I am having to do it either because A, a bug, or I am maintaining some binding within this layer. I'm just pulling this out of my head right now. I really don't know. But the solution is putting a specific remove this action layer function as a release press. So when you stop pressing, like this should probably work now. I release, yep, it worked. Um, Yeah, it's working great. Cool. App switcher. All right, so so this is it. Here it is. I think we're done. I think we've done it. Now again, we're gonna make changes. We're gonna update this. I want I want to hear your guys' feedback. Any of you that use this, and. And let me know what you think and what, what your hands do and how things go for you. 
this should be, I don't know why it says that it's not there, but it is in, in all of these, right? Yeah, like right here, it says that the gyro is not on in this layer, but it is. Yeah. Same here. Oops. And there's a lot of quality of life improvements that can be made to the Steam configuration, the, the big picture configuration. Um, we, maybe we'll do that sometime. I don't, I don't spend that much time in big picture mode, but I do spend time in the controller configurator, which uses that same configuration. So there's things that I, I change to my Steam controller's big picture configuration just for the purposes of making, you know, configs and, and managing configs a little bit easier. We're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, the first most obvious thing that I would do is I would decrease the gyro sensitivity inside of, uh, inside of big picture, but, but it's not super important right now. All right, so where are we at? We've got... We've got five layers. Essentially, we got four layers that are kind of our, our main use case layers. Our L layer gives us control over letters. So L, we can select words very easily with our, our trigger, which dampens our gyro, deadens our gyro when we make our selection. Our left trigger, We'll select entire paragraphs. And while we're in this L layer, our face buttons become copy, cut, paste, enter, uh, select all. See this? It's great. And then space, right? Where's space? Because we don't, we don't have space there. Let's see, L, uh, control, Undo, redo, that's where undo, redo is. That's right, that's where that should be. That's good. So undo, redo, oh, it's great. And we stacked redo, so we have an alternate redo, because some programs it's uh, control Y, some programs it's left, or it's control shift Z. And so long press, we'll, we'll get to that alt redo. Um, we've stacked our copy, so square is copy. And it, there's, there's no interruptible function, so it fires right away. And then a long press, very short long press, is a cut. Circle is paste. Control all is triangle. And enter is X. And then our, our D layers are a really important one. I mean, I don't need to go through the whole thing again. We just, we just spent, you know, an hour and a half or something going, like building this thing. So I think it should all make sense. Um, up. Adjust our volume. Oh, it's so nice. And then you can mute it. Uh, it. This is great. This is really great. I'm I'm super happy with this. And uh, and I hope that I hope that somebody has learned something along the way. Um, let's go ahead and export this. We're gonna go save new binding. And we're gonna go Rikers Dual Sense desktop 1.0 1.5 because it's not actually the 1.0 the 1.0 was the test that I did in preparation for today's show so and I don't want to get confused now I did the wrong duel you know what? I'm going to keep it though Okay. I mean, having that acceleration on high makes makes grabbing things so much easier. Um, everything, everything is better. Everything is better now. This is so much better, so much better. And then if I want, you know, if I wanted to close this tab, you saw me earlier, right? Trying to fight to get that, that little button. Uh, using the joystick, just uh, trying to get to it. Uh, it was terrible. And but now w the way I would close this tab, I wouldn't even touch it. I would just go like I would just go boop, boop, 
boop, boop, boop. Look at that, just closing tabs. We don't even care. Okay, let's reopen those tabs, why not? Um, or I can go, you know, I can just click it because when I'm in the R layer, my click becomes a, a middle mouse button. And that's just infinitely useful. All right, did I forget anything? I don't think so. I think that's all for now. Well, there we go. Okay, one more thing. Everybody, thank you all so much for hanging out, for hanging out through all this controller stuff. I appreciate it. I know most of the time we get together and we play games and we have our, our, our gyro aiming fun. And we had a little bit of gyro aiming, I guess, when you think about it. But I know that this is not the most relevant thing to everybody. But I certainly had a good time, and I hope you did too. So thanks a lot for hanging out. It's really nice to see everybody again. And I, uh, I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. So if you have nothing better going on, then come back. Because, hey, tomorrow's Warzone Wednesday. And I'm not committing to using this PS5 controller in-game just yet. but you never know. It's certainly not gonna replace my Steam controller. And the skill ceiling is absolutely much, much lower. But I'm still curious. So, I don't know, we'll see. Thanks again. And one more huge happy birthday to my friend in the in the Triforce, and assuming that you're there, and that, that you can hear this, and that you're you're watching this, uh, been thinking about you all day, and hoping that you are having a wonderful day. So, if you're there, take care. The rest of you, thank you so much for hanging out. If you're a 
If you're watching this on YouTube, hello. And uh, my name is Riker, and this is the Riker Initiative. And this is a live show that I do for my friends in the Tricom. If you'd like to become a member, man, we'd love to have you. You know, it's a small little community of, of people. It's a lot of amazing artists. We've sort of, um, I don't know how this has happened, but we have an amazing little community that I'm incredibly uh, not only proud of, but grateful for. You guys have brought tremendous value to my life and, and I'm hopeful that things will, things will definitely continue. And if you're watching this and you'd like to be a part, by all means, check the link in the description. Membership is open until the end of the year. We would love to have you, absolutely. And, uh, and if you're not interested in, in joining, that's totally fine too. I make all sorts of content you can, you can watch on YouTube and, and, uh, and I hope you find something valuable in all of it. Also, if you like the music, um, it's all freely available. Uh, royalty free, you're never gonna get DMCA nonsense. And you could use it for your videos and stuff like that. I make this stuff available to, to everyone in the Tricom, constantly adding more and more as we go. So if that's something you're interested in, come on by. We'd love to, to get to know you. And again, because I wasn't able to do so yesterday, welcome to Milen, Jason, and XX666 Hail Satan 666XX. I'm extremely happy to have you guys in the Tricom, and I look forward to getting to know you all and your pet snakes. Have a great night, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow.